May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There are so many interesting things that I want to tell you about both of these scripture passages that we just read. But when I read the Second Kings at the beginning of this week, when I read it aloud, I found it almost unbearably moving. And that's the only thing I keep coming back to. Now, it's easy when you're listening to it read, even from a great reader like George, it is interesting to let the repetition just sort of like slide over you. But go home this afternoon and read it aloud. Shape those words with your own mouth and see if the grief in that passage of 2 Kings doesn't hit you. Scripture doesn't tell us how long Elisha had been with his teacher Elijah. All we know is that one day, Elijah came down from the mountain where he had experienced the still, small voice of God. He came down from the mountain and he saw Elisha plowing with 12 oxen in the field, and he threw his cloak over Elisha's shoulders. And much like Peter and Andrew and James and John, whom we read about just a few weeks ago, Elisha immediately said yes when Elijah asked him to follow along. And then for months or maybe years, they were co-laborers traveling together, working together at the work God had given them to do. And now in today's passage, Elijah's time on earth is coming to an end. And it seems that everyone knows it. As Elijah and Elisha walk towards the Jericho River, every group of people they meet, and these groups of people, they're schools of prophets, people who are studying, who are very religious. Every group of people they meet asks Elisha, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? One thing about church people is we love to share the gossip. But this feels a little mean, right? Do you know God's going to take your master away from you today? Every time Elisha says, yes, I know, keep silent. And I feel his grief in that. He's not avoiding what's coming. He's staying right there in it. But he just doesn't want to talk about it with other people, not yet. As they journey on toward this inevitability, Elijah keeps trying to get Elisha to stay behind, to let him go on alone. Elijah wants to do this last thing by himself. Maybe he prefers the Irish goodbye. I know I do. But Elisha won't let him slip away. As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. He's kind of stubborn. And my heart breaks a little bit for him. For all of us who don't want to say goodbye to our loved ones. Who don't want to say goodbye to life as we've known it. We've had a lot of goodbyes at Trinity lately. Hard goodbyes. People we were not ready to say goodbye to. In the gospel, Peter doesn't want to leave either. And I think, in part, it's the same reason. He doesn't want to be separated from his teacher. See, right before the scene we read, the scene where they go up on the mountain, right before that, Jesus was asking his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they said, some say you're a prophet, some say you're Elijah. And Jesus says, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter for the first time in Mark's gospel, names it and gets it right. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, you're right. And then Jesus begins explaining what's coming next. The suffering, the betrayal, the death. And Peter pulls him aside and rebukes him. Don't talk about death, Jesus. We don't talk about that in polite company. We pretend it doesn't exist. 
And Jesus uses some of the strongest language we ever see him use. And Jesus tells Peter basically to shut up. So we've just seen that Peter does not want to face the reality of Jesus' death. He's, he's putting his fingers in his ears and saying, la, 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 la. I don't want to hear about it. And then on the mountain, he sees even more clearly the glory of God in Jesus. It's dazzling. And his ancestors are there. And he just wants to stay in that moment forever. It's good for us to be here, he says. Let's build shelters and stay It's not just the goodness and the glory that makes him say this, but his knowledge, his new knowledge of what's coming next. He doesn't want to leave this mountain because he knows the next thing is walking towards death. I wonder what moments you've had like this. What bedside you've refused to leave. What Going away party was just so good it lasted all night. What mountaintop moment when all felt right with the world and you just wanted to stay there. When have you felt like Elisha and Peter, unwilling to turn your face towards the hard thing that might be coming next? When have you experienced that glory and goodness? You know, we cling to those moments because they're right, because we know that that's what we were created for, for intimacy and relationships and belonging and glory. There's nothing wrong with clinging to and longing for those kinds of moments. But the glory we experience on earth is temporary. Elijah leaves Elisha to carry on the work without him. Peter and Jesus come down from the mountain, and the cross must come. God gives us these gifts, these moments of vision, to strengthen us for what's ahead, to show us what is true, the light of the glory of God in Christ. But the cross will come, and when it does, When the grief of loss and death strikes us, we can hold on to what we've seen. Maybe this is why in the Episcopal Church we read this account of the transfiguration twice every year. It feels like we're always here because we always need to be here. We always need to be reminded. We hold close these moments of revelation We hold close the relationships that gave us the faith to leave behind the things we needed to leave behind. We hold close the truths that we heard from God when we were on the mountaintop. And with them, we can walk with Jesus toward the cross, knowing that the only reason we can face it is that he has already faced it and overcome it. This Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, we will encounter again the truth that to live is to be subject to death. And then we'll enter our season of penitence and self-examination, a season of letting go of things that distract us and practicing attending to what's real. We will enter the wilderness with Jesus as he walks toward his death. But as we do so, may we remember this moment, this flash of glory, this message from God. Grief will not endure forever, but glory will. Hallelujah.